Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. And this is episode 123, The Allegory of Arthur. Guys, welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast, a podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey we call life. Guys, this is the much-anticipated episode. Uh, we set the stage last week for who King Arthur is. Today we're going to discuss the parallels between King Arthur and... And Jesus, the messianic profile, the the concept of a kingly priest. That's what this whole episode is going to be about. I appreciate you guys tuning in very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, go back and listen to the last couple episodes when we are kind of leading up to this one. We've talked about the allegory of Aslan, the allegory of Aragorn. Now we're going to be talking about Arthur today. It's going to be a little bit more in depth than some of the other ones, just because Arthur is he's such a complex character. Because just like the other two, he, maybe he's figurative, but maybe he was a real guy. But he's got a lasting impression on, on our culture and society and how we do things uh, today. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you want to check out more of the Three Pillars Podcast, check out the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. Uh, it's got all the fitness, uh, daily fitness routines. I've got uh, quotes of the day, workouts of the day, blog posts. Check us out over there. Check us out on Good Pods. Go over there, leave a rating review anywhere that you are listening to this uh, podcasts are watching. If you're on a video platform, please subscribe, share the share the show, leave a comment. Let's get the uh, those engagement numbers up. So we're going to get into this. I've got a kind of a notes paper kind of thing going on here. We're going to read it, go through it, discuss it per the usual, and uh, learn more about Arthur and Jesus and how we can mimic these guys in our daily life because that's what we're called to do. So without further ado, let's kick this off with a word of prayer and we'll dive right in. So Heavenly Father. We just love you. We praise your name on high from the highest mountains to the lowest valleys. We want to just shout your name to the corners of the earth. Lord, thank you for giving us an example to follow. Thank you for showing yourself and revealing yourself through all these timeless characters that we've discussed over the past couple of weeks and how all of these characteristics represent some sort of aspect of you and how we can really take this amalgamation of people and and find you there and ultimately follow you guide and guide us through this this time in our lives lord i ask you to be with me give me the words to say give anybody listening to this the eyes to see ears to hear and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you in the holy name of jesus amen all right guys so the allegory of arthur the legends of king arthur and camelot and the messianic profile of jesus in the bible offer many parallels and contrasts and they provide insights into this archetype of the kingly priest. This uh, discussion we're going to have is going to explore the connections between these figures, and it's going to highlight the overlapping traits, and, and we're going to examine the concept of a kingly priest within both the biblical and the Arthur narrative. We talked about Arthur last week. We set the stage for it, but just to kind of recap, Arthur, he's, he's a folktale. Was he a real guy? Maybe not. I like to think he was at least... Maybe it was a couple of different guys amalgamated into one. Well, I'll let you guys be the, the, the judge of that. But in his legend, in his folklore, certain resemblances to the Messianic profile of Jesus uh, depicted in the Bible, both of these figures, both Jesus and Arthur, uh, characterize they uh, have leadership, they have righteousness, they have the potential embodiment of this kingly priest. So we're going to get, again, get into that relationship today and analyzing these roles as the kingly priest. That is what we want to be is not just a follower, right? We want to follow Christ. We want to follow his example. We want to follow, follow God and everything with that. But he, our charge on earth is to be this kingly priest to, uh, in, in a Bible it talks about the order of Melchizedek. We'll get down to that later on, but to be that kingly priest, kind of like David was a king and he was a priest. He was the, he was the head of the state and he was also the head of the church. That's how we need to be in our own lives and our own uh, examples. Does that make sense? So we're going to get into that. So let's start with parallels between King Arthur and Jesus. So King Arthur in the Arthurian legend, he's portrayed as a noble and just ruler seeking, seeking to establish the kingdom of unity and peace. Similarly, Jesus, as depicted in the Gospels, embodies virtues of righteousness, justice, compassion, and aiming to bring spiritual salvation and peace to humanity. Both of these figures exhibit traits and leadership and traits of leadership and authority. King Arthur is renowned for wielding Excalibur, 
It symbolizes his authority and rightful kingship. This echoes Jesus' portrayal as a divine leader with spiritual authority over his followers. Furthermore, the theme of sacrifice is evident in both narratives. King Arthur sacrifices his life for the greater good of his kingdom, as when he fights Mordred and he ultimately saves and wards off the evil in the world, right? It's very akin to Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, symbolizing redemption and salvation. Obviously not the same types of things, but you can see that sacrifice. You can see these themes that play into these heroes. But any hero you can find, you can find Jesus anywhere. And you can you can extrapolate uh, the good out of all these things, right? So that's the initial um, comparison, right? So let's talk about leadership and virtues. King Arthur, within these Arthurian legends, he embodies chivalry justice and leadership he is depicted as a noble ruler and a just ruler who establishes the knights of the round table aiming for unity and fairness in his kingdom similarly jesus is depicted in the gospels exemplifies again compassion righteousness and moral leadership he gathers his disciples and preaches about love forgiveness and the kingdom of god advocating for spiritual unity and salvation so the knights of the round table us as disciples we are following the lord we're following his example we want to go out there and spread the good news spread the light of christ to the ends of the earth just like the knights of the round table wanted to get out there and be virtuous they wanted to be chivalrous they wanted to um, bring peace to the land that's what we're called to do except we're following jesus again arthur is not jesus but you can see the traits that arthur displays throughout his story uh, just kind of like we talked about last week. This is more of the, obviously more of the Arthurian legend, not necessarily the Roman, because we don't know a lot about either one of them. But the Arthurian legend with Excalibur is more uh, relatable because it has the hero's journey. It has the, the savior concept. It's got humble beginnings. It's got all these things. But again, Jesus does too in the Bible. He's the ultimate hero. So that's why this is such a, such a cool connection, right? Next, symbolism and divine connections. Both figures were associated with symbolic elements that signify their authority and divine connections. King Arthur possesses Excalibur and it symbolizes his legitimately as the rightful king. And the Holy Grail in the Arthurian legend represents purity and divine favor. Likewise, Jesus' miracles, teachings, and divine origins symbolize his authority as the Son of God, reflecting divine favor and spiritual power. So again, Excalibur. That is his legitimacy. That says, hey, I am the king. I'm the rightful, uh, rightful king. And he was always after the Holy Grail because that's that purity and divine favor. Jesus, his divine authority is given by God. When he was baptized by John the Baptist and the dove came down from heaven and said, and uh, the voice from heaven said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. That, boom, that solidified his, uh, his power and his authority. And then throughout uh, Jesus' ministry when he... Um, transfigured when he died when he uh, resurrected when he ascended into heaven all these things solidify him as uh, the one true uh, uh, cause of our salvation okay so that is the beauty of uh, of kind of the similarity his jesus is is the holy grail if you will he is purity he is divine favor because that he embodies that arthur is just uh, kind of a an allegory to that obviously allegory of arthur King Arthur embarks on quests for the greater good of his kingdom, facing challenges and making personal sacrifices. His ultimate sacrifice comes in the form of his mortal wound during the Battle of Comland, aligning with the, the theme of selflessness and sacrifice for his people. We talked about that last week when he defeated Mordred, uh, Mordred right? Before that was Baden Hill when he drove off uh, the enemies, but then Comland was when he was you know, betrayed uh, by his, his uh, half-brother. Similarly, Jesus embarks on his mission to save humanity, enduring trials, persecution, and ultimately sacrificing his life on the cross for the redemption of humankind. Both figures' uh, sacrifices carry profound implications for their respective realms, portraying themes of redemption and salvation. Both of these leaders, knowing the responsibility that they have, the knowing the responsibility and the burdens that they bear, took all that on for their people and ultimately died to save their people. Arthur, say, uh, dying to, to ward off the evil, goes into the boat to the mists of Avalon to return and when he's needed most, right? In a similar fashion, uh, Jesus died for all of us. He took all the sins of the world, past, present, and future, put it on his soul, put it on his body, and 
redeemed humanity, the redeemed human condition, way more powerful than what Arthur did. But he did sacrifice for all of us, his beloved. He ascended into heaven and will return again when the time is right. Very similar types of things. Jesus' quest, if you will, was the start of his birth until his death was to embody uh, the path, right? To sh give us that example of how to uh, treat others and ultimately get everyone to heaven. So that's that was his quest. Arthur had a very similar quest, trying to uh, live an example. He was not a perfect man. By any of the legends, he was not a perfect man. Just like David was not a perfect man, but he tried. Arthur is generally considered a Christian, trying to follow after the Lord, trying to embody that kingly priest role. Idealized kingdoms. Both King Arthur and Jesus strive to establish kingdoms, but in different contexts. King Arthur seeks to create a unified and just kingdom on earth, free from tyranny and discord. His aspiration for the ideal Camelot embodies harmony and fairness among his subjects. Conversely, Jesus' mission involves establishing the kingdom of God, emphasizing spiritual salvation, righteousness, and eternal life. His teachings focus on a spiritual realm, transcending earthly kingdoms, offering hope and salvation to believers. So, Arthur's trying to establish a perfect kingdom on earth in one little spot and to, and to kind of expand that kingdom into the, the reaches. Jesus is doing something very similar, but he's trying to establish the kingdom of God on the whole of the earth by bringing you know, heaven down, eradicating evil completely, and having this, this beautiful uh, new existence on earth. And the only way that happens is when every knee bows and every, everybody repents and, and, and confesses that Jesus is Lord. Arthur's more of an ideal. Jesus is the truth. It's that simple. Both figures leave a lasting legacy that extends beyond their lifetimes. King Arthur's legacy is intertwined with the Arthurian legends, inspiring tales of chivalry, bravery, and the pursuit of noble ideals. Similarly, Jesus' teachers, teachings and sacrificial death have had a profound impact on the course of history, shaping religious beliefs, moral values, and ethical principles for millions worldwide. These parallels highlight the archetypal elements shared between King Arthur and Jesus, showcasing their roles as virtuous leaders, symbols of sacrifice, and bearers of profound impacts on their respective realms, whether earthly or spiritually. Their narratives continue to captivate audiences and inspire interpretations that resonate with themes of leadership, sacrifice, and the pursuit of this noble ideal. Okay. So, we've talked about kind of their similarities. Let's get into their differences, the contrasts. There are significant differences that emerge as these potential kingly priests. Arthur, again a legendary king, he primarily governs on earth, while Jesus embodies a spiritual kingdom offering salvation and eternal life through his divine grace. Additionally, while King Arthur is depicted as a mortal king, Jesus, in our faith, is believed to be the, the divine son of God and the embodiment of God on earth, and that emphasizes his transcendent nature and unique role as the savior of humanity. So he is God incarnate on earth, and he is the savior of humanity, where Arthur is just a mortal king trying to save his people from, you know, death and destruction in, in, in the physical realm. Jesus is not only trying to, he, he's, he's concerned with the physical, but he's more uh, concerned with your spiritual salvation, if that makes sense. <laughs> This fundamental contrast lies in the realms prime, that they inhabit and influence. Again, Arthur's role is tied to the earthly realm and where he governs Camelot. And he strives to have a just and true uh, kingdom on earth that is free of, of tyranny. His leadership is, is, again, focused on those mortal affairs, governance, and the establishments of a harmonious society. Jesus' role, on the other hand, it goes beyond the earthly realm. He emphasizes, again, the spiritual kingdom and, and salvation. Eternity... To him is like this, honestly, because he exists far beyond eternity. But our little timeline that we exist in, that if we want to say Arthur was real and he existed, is right here. Jesus is, is concerned with that because this little spot we have on, on earth will ultimately get us this much eternity, right? His teachings revolve around spiritual truths, the kingdom of God and eternal life. While he interacts with people in these, this earthly realm, his primary mission involves spiritual redemption and reconciliation and redemption, again, between humanity and God. That is Jesus' role. He wants to redeem the human condition. Arthur does that to the best he can. He can't do it because he, he doesn't have the power to, but he tries to set an example uh, of how to live, right? 
another co uh, contrast, mortal versus divine. King Arthur is a mortal king. He's got limitations, vulnerabilities, and, and temptations of human existence. His life and actions are within the bounds of morta uh, mortality. And his ultimate fate is depicted as mortal. His death marks the end of his reign. In a very, very stark contrast, Jesus is presented as this divine son of God. He, believe, he is both fully human and fully divine. His divine nature sets him apart from his mortal limitations, granting him this unique authority, transcendence, and the ability to offer salvation through his sacrificial death and resurrection. Jesus was fully human, so he had all those temptations that Arthur had. He had all the temptations that, that David had. He, he had bounds of mortality, and he was ultimately died as a, as a human. But Jesus' death did not mark the end of his early reign, his earthly reign, like Arthur's did. It was the beginning because he died, but he was resurrected and he ascended into heaven. So this, this divinity that he shows, this redemption that he brings, brings us out of death and hell too. That's what sets him apart from these earthly kings like David and Solomon and, uh, and Arthur in this case. Again, different forms of sacrifice. Both figures undergo sacrificial moments, but the nature and implications of these sacrifices, they differ significantly. King Arthur's sacrifice comes in the form of his mortal wound at the Battle of Cumlin, signifying his willingness to lay down his life for the greater good of his kingdom. His sacrifice, again, it's very noble. It's just a mortal sacrifice for the earthly realm. But Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is that divine and ultimate act of atonement. He was crucified on Passover, for goodness sake. He was the atonement lamb. If you know anything about Passover, you always have that perfect, unblemished lamb that you're supposed to sacrifice and atone for all your sins, right? Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. His crucifixion and subsequent resurrection are believed to offer redemption, and they do offer redemption and salvation to humanity, providing eternal life and reconciliation with God. Again, takes us outside of the boundaries of human existence. He brings us into the family of the Most High. Legacy and influence. Arthur's legacy primarily resides in the realm of folklore and legend and it inspires tales of bravery, chivalry again, and the pursuit of noble ideas. His impact, while it's very, very significant in shaping history and cultural traditions, it still remains within this mortal realm of storytelling and historical interpretations. Jesus, on the other hand, extends far beyond again this mortal realm. His teachings, his sacrificial death and resurrection, and his ascension have profoundly influenced world history and world events. It shapes our entire worldview. It establishes our moral values and our ethical principles for billions of people across the centuries and around the world today. His impact encompasses both the spiritual and earthly realms and again takes us outside of this mortal prison that we're in. It's mortal limits that we have. These contrasts highlight the divergence in their roles. While Arthur, again, is that earthly kingship and mortal sacrifice, Jesus is divine. He offers us spiritual redemption and this enduring legacy that transcends our mortal existence. So now we're going to shift gears. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it because this is just ah, it's so, it's so fascinating to find Jesus uh, everywhere you look if you just choose to look, right? The concept of a kingly priest. Now we're going to get into this. This notion, it intertwines the rules of a uh, the roles of a ruler and a spiritual leader, a, a political leader and a religious leader, combining earthly authority with divine attributes. Arthur, in his aspiration to establish a realm of justice and harmony, demonstrates qualities reminiscent of a kingly priest. Similarly, Jesus, as the Messiah and the High Priest in in the Christian faith, our faith, embodies the ultimate kingly priest, reconciling humanity with the divine through his sacrificial atonement. King Arthur's portrayal in the Arthurian legends incorporates elements of both kingship and leadership akin to a kingly priest. As the ruler of Camelot, Arthur seeks to establish a realm of justice, unity, and harmony. Again, it's reminiscent of the king's role in governing his earthly domain, a, a monocratic, uh, what's the, a, mono, a theocratic monarch, I guess is what we're trying to get to, um, if you want to put it into, you know, uh, official terms, right? His leadership qualities, quest for justice, and guidance of the Knights of the Round Table parallel the attributes of a just and wise ruler. 
While Arthur's primary focus is on earthly governance, his quest for the Holy Grail and the ideas of chivalry within the Arthurian tales hint at spiritual undertones. There's no question that he wasn't, was a, a Christian concept if he wasn't a man himself. The pursuit of the Holy Grail, a symbol of this divine favor and spiritual purity, reflects a yearning for spiritual fulfillment beyond the confines of earthly kingdoms. And this quest introduces elements of a higher spiritual calling intertwined with his earthly kingship. On the flip side, Jesus, as portrayed in the Gospels, embodies the archetype of a kingly priest in a profoundly unique and comprehensive manner. His divine nature as the Son of God transcends mortal limitations, aligning with the concept of a spiritual kingdom and a priestly role that supersedes earthly rulership. Jesus' teachings, again, characterized by wisdom, compassion, moral guidance, uh, healing, redemption, these resemble the rights of a just ruler. His parables often impart lessons on justice, mercy, and the kingdom of God, mirroring the ideals a king might promote within his realm. Moreover, Jesus' acts of healing, restoration, and forgiveness showcase his authority over spiritual matters, akin to the priestly role of uh, meditation and healing. So he is just and he is merciful, but he's also uh, a healer, a restorer. He forgives. He's a perfectly just and a perfectly loving God, just like he has been since the dawn of time. If we start straying off the path he's going to try to bring us back into it just like that one sheep that runs off he's always cares for that even though his other 99 are over here he could just let you go but he doesn't the pinnacle of jesus's role as a kingly priest lies in his sacrificial death and in subsequent subsequent resurrection his crucifixion is understood as the ultimate act of atonement offering redemption and salvation to humanity this fulfills the priestly function of reconciling humanity with God. This sacrificial act transcends earthly kingship, emphasizing spiritual life, uh, spiritual salvation and eternal life. All the kings and priests of old had to make a sacrifice, and they had to do it over and over and over again to unite uh, and reconcile humanity with God. Jesus did it once. Once and for all, the ultimate sacrifice. This makes him the ultimate king, ultimate kingly priest. The debt has been paid. But now it's time for you to hold up your end of the bargain. Okay. While King Arthur embodies earthly kingship with hints of spiritual quest, Jesus represents the ultimate union of kingly and priestly attributes, seamlessly integrating the roles of ruler and divine mediator. Jesus' divine nature sacrificial atonement and spiritual teachings unify the earthly and spiritual realms offering salvation and guidance that surpasses our mortal kingdoms and our mortal understanding in summary while king arthur showcases aspects of a kingly figure with hints of these spiritual quests jesus is that ultimate embodiment of the kingly priest archetype blending divine kingship sacrificial atonement and spiritual leadership in a manner that transcends again our earthly limitations and he offers eternal significance in his act uh, acts here on earth so to conclude anytime you get into theological discussions the parallel between king arthur of camelot and jesus of nazareth offers a lens through which to explore themes of virtuous leadership sacrificial atonement and the pursuit of noble ideals while their historical and mythological contexts differ the similarities between these figures serve as reminders and of virtues to emulate and symbolize uh, the similarities between these figures serve as reminders of virtues to emulate and symbols that resonate within the christian theological discourse these parallels while intriguing highlight the timeless significance of virtuous leadership sacrificial love and the pursuit of divine ideals, inviting contemplation on the enduring impact of these figures in shaping moral and ethical frameworks within our Christian worldview. So that sums up everything we've gotten into about uh, Arthur and Jesus. Taking it one step further, you've heard in the Bible the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a kingly priest in the Bible. Not a lot's known about the guy, but the, the idea is that he is the ultimate king and the ultimate priest. And that is what Jesus uh, brings together, the ultimate kingly priest. All these other guys have failed. They've sinned. They've led their people astray. They've led themselves astray. But Jesus will not let you go astray. So your job, your role is to be that spiritual leader in your household, in your community, wherever you're at, but also be that political leader, that, that, that just and merciful ruler 
you know, firm but fair, right? But also your job, especially men, is to get your spouse, your children to heaven. That's our ultimate goal. So if you want to embody the the uh, Jesus lifestyle and the Arthurian legend and, and put those together and to combine that with Ar Aragorn and Aslan, all these, these awesome uh, people that we've discussed over the past couple weeks, you can just follow that example, but most importantly, keep your eyes focused and your heart focused on the Lord. That's all I got for you guys. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this discussion and the past discussions of the past couple of weeks on these historical figures, uh, specifically this one with King Arthur. If you liked this episode, please leave us a rating and review wherever you're at especially if you're over there on Good Pods. If you're on Good Pods, make an account. Go in there, rate the show, rate any episodes that you have listened to. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way for a podcast like me to, to get discovered. Share the show. That's how we grow. So I enjoyed that very much. Thank you all for, for being here with me throughout this entire episode. I know it's a little bit longer than normal, but we're going to get through it, all right? So I'm going to end with a quick word of prayer, as always. Kick you guys out for a phenomenal weekend. And we'll go on uh, to next week. I don't even know what I got on, on, on the docket for next week, but we'll figure it out uh, here soon. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name on high, Lord. Thank you for being an example. Thank you for being our kingly priest. Thank you for leading us both spiritually, mentally, and physically in all aspects of our life. Thank you for coming down and, and showing us how to live and then redeeming us and bringing us back to you through your ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for giving us characters like Aslan and Aragorn and Arthur to find you and to find, uh, you know, to relate their own human struggles through these characters that we can overcome them and become mighty warriors and become kingly priests to follow you and to rule and govern uh, on earth as you have called us to do, Lord. Lord, give us the strength to do this every day. Keep our faith strong every single day. Guide us and direct us all the days of our lives that, again, we may better serve you and further your kingdom here on earth. Lord, I ask this in the most holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. Until next week, Tobinator, out. <laughs>